One of the global challenges that we face is definitely trying to feed the population and that's in a sustainable way moving forward. Food technology has been important for at least 150 years. It has been a fantastic source of providing the world's population with food. But we haven't been able to do that for the entire population. What we need to do is really to expand this, provide good food, delicious foods, nutritious foods with low environmental impact to the entire world. What we try to do is close the gaps that we have identified with the help of the researchers at Lund University. We see that plant-based is a huge trend that is not going away anytime soon. And what is interesting is that it's not the same plants that are of interest in every country. Plant-based products are very important. Since we have to increase the total amount of food that we're eating, we have to find new sources for doing that. And then of course we have to eat more of the plant-based and probably we will continue eating at, at least as much of the, of the uh, animal-based food that we're eating, but perhaps most of our increase will be in plant-based. Rapeseed is the second largest oil seed that is cultivated worldwide today and is really popular here in Sweden. And the main product from the oil seed is the oil and the press cake is a residue today. So this is rapeseed press cake that is only used as animal feed. So this product contains around 30% proteins, but we need to process it to be able to use it for human consumption. So, and that is basically what my PhD project is about, to recover and purify these proteins. Traditionally, we've looked at the land as a source for food, as at soil, for example, but it's maybe not going to be enough for the future, so we need to look at oceans, maybe the, the aquatic life, what we can gather there, algae for example. I know there's a company making protein out of air. We need to start thinking in those kinds of abstract ways in order to feed the population in the future. It's also important to realize that sometimes the consumer don't really know what they want. For instance, there is a lot of or consumer demand on what, what's called natural foods. But I think, from my perspective, it's very difficult to actually distinguish what is a natural food and what is an unnatural food. It's mostly a question about habit, what we've gotten used to eating. In terms of challenges, it's also about how we then take those new ingredients and how do we make them safe food products. We have several research projects together with Tetra Park and I'm quite impressed that Tetra Park is usually also interested in, 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 the, in the basic, in the fundamental understanding of how something is working and not only in trying to, to find a new product or to optimize their, their new process and so on. And I see that as something that is quite rare in especially the food industry. By collaborating with Lund University, Tetra Pak really gains a deeper understanding of some of the phenomena that we observe out at customer sites or out in the field. Sometimes we don't have the time to look into the details or maybe not even the exact expertise that's needed. And therefore I see this collaboration with Lund University as extremely valuable so that we can together understand some of these very puzzling challenges. When we innovate, we collaborate with different players and develop breakthrough solutions to lead the sustainability transformation in our industry. We innovate to protect the planet.